Well, thank you so much for having me. I've learned a ton today, and being surrounded by so many brilliant minds has been a total inspiration. And so I'm going to talk about what chefs can bring to the food waste conversation. Um, we are natural leaders. We have to lead a team. We're only as good as the the least good person on our team. We're creative, we're restless, we're always trying to drive constant improvement and we really understand food waste because in a restaurant, we have very slim margins and if you waste food or labor, waste anything, uh, you're out of business, you lose your job and uh, it doesn't work. The other great thing about chefs these days is we have a spotlight. There's a real global foodie culture everywhere. And also, funny enough, uh, <laughs> chefs are trusted by the public as much as doctors, studies show. And we're generous people. <laughs> we, uh, we love to feed you and we love to share our expertise with you and, um, and bring it to consumers. And we have a lot of great tricks about how not to waste food from hundreds of years of traditions. So I want to just tell you a little bit about my journey to advocacy, which uh, started when I was uh, pregnant with my 28-year-old, and um, there was a scare about ALAR on apples, and every mom wants to be able to give their kid apples, and I was outraged and incensed, and I called our national public radio sh uh, general manager, our, our station in Los Angeles, and invited her to lunch to pitch a five minute radio show that would tell the public about the threats in our food system. And she laughed and said, that's the worst idea I've ever heard. <laughs> but would you like to have an, a one hour show once a week and talk about the celebrate food, but weave your message in. So we started the Good Food Radio Hour, which then kind of, um, led to a TV show, cookbooks, and then something happened that was really great. The Monterey Bay Aquarium invited chefs and scientists to get together for a two-day kind of um, seminar about what chefs could do to help to, to understand first what was happening in our oceans and that seafood was not being uh, fished sustain sustainably, but also how much change we might be able to to fuel through our menus, through who we talk to, through how we, um, you know, present food. And so that was like a really, like a total aha moment for me. We, I went back and immediately changed our menus and realized that changing menus really changes lives and, and, and chefs have a responsibility. It wasn't that easy to transform our menu from big fish to smaller fish. And, you know, we, I had pushback from our servers who I had to convince, but um, they, really, they really came around because they, they, and they actually love working for a restaurant that has a, and ethical and has a plan. Um, it's painful for chefs to see food waste, you know, and these supersized portions and, you know, vegetables being left in the field to rot when we could come up with all kinds of great ideas about how to use them and preserve them. And, and to see that, you know, everyday people are unaccustomed to handling food and so they actually rely on a sell-by date instead of their own senses, their noses, to figure out whether something's edible or not. And um, all the, you know, misshapen, bruised fruits and vegetables out there that sometimes taste even better than the perfect looking ones, but they've been marketed to and they don't understand. So I think that chefs can really help in a big way. We can define what a better food system is or what a better food choice is for the consumer. And we can make a lot of noise about it, subtly and loudly. And I, I was, I'm curious about what would happen if every chef in the world, every time we were asked to submit a recipe or to do an interview or to go teach a cooking class or go to our kids' school on career day or do a TV show or write a book, what if every single time we modeled really the kind of behavior that supports a better food system and talked about you know, eating predominantly plant-based foods and promoting only sustainable seafood. And you know, I think that um, we have a real platform to open consumers' minds. I have um, 
One example is Impossible Foods, which is a, a plant-based meat. And they wisely put a, a chef in San Francisco, Tracy Desjardins, on staff from the very beginning, not only to advise about the flavor, but also to be able to go to the public and to other chefs and explain it and kind of market this new product so that it wasn't received as some kind of Frankenstein food. And it's been really quite successful. And it's delicious, too. Um, the other thing about chefs is we employ armies of servers who can get out there in our dining rooms and talk to our diners and really explain what the, what's on the menu and why it's on the menu. And I think if, if chefs can make kale and Brussels sprouts and quinoa sexy, we ought to be able to make eating responsibly sexy also. So I'm not saying that chefs are going to be able to... <laughs> Thank you. Um, chefs aren't going to be able to change the world's broken food system, obviously, on our own. But I can tell you that the majority of chefs that I know care really deeply about feeding people. It's not an easy job. And so we wouldn't do it if we didn't really care about it. And we care about our kids and our grandkids having access to the rich culinary diversity that we enjoy and the planet can nurture them. We want it to be able to nurture them like it's nurtured us. So I'm inviting you to use us. You know, use us in food tech to introduce new products and innovations. Use us in food policy. You know, chefs are called on to lobby lawmakers all the time because we influence thousands of people through our dining rooms, our uh, social media, our staff. We're, we're constantly teaching and, and affecting people. And so lawmakers are listening to us. I've been on Capitol Hill and I've lobbied Congress with Seafood Watch for sustainable seafood, with Oxfam to support foreign food aid, and also to pressure supermarkets to source responsibly and stop wasting. And um, with the Pew Charitable Trust to fight overuse of antibiotics in farm animals. I've also, you know, with several different organizations, including No Kid Hungry and Share Our Strength, um, been working on the Farm Bill, which is a huge one. And I don't know if we're going to get very far. We might just be able to hang on to what we've got this time around. But next, next time, we'll go for it. And I also want to tell you about... Um, what we're doing at the James Beard Foundation. I'm on the board of trustees of, of the James Beard Foundation, and we have something called the Impact Programs. I serve on that committee. And what we're doing is taking chefs out of their kitchens for a two-day intensive, we call it a boot camp, and we're training chefs to really use their voices for policy and change. And they can pick whatever area really moves them, but um, we've had some amazing things happen out of it, like magically happen that uh, in one case, a Nashville chef returned from boot camp and he immediately mobilized a bunch of other chefs and the city lawmakers and the trash community and they all came together to come up with some great workable solutions for food waste in Nashville. And it's been pretty great. We have 200 chefs have already gone through boot camp and we have a thousand on the waiting list. And um, I'm very proud of that program. I think it's just doing an, an immense amount of good. Um, the other thing is I've had the privilege the last 72 hours to be here in Stockholm, gorgeous Stockholm, uh, with chefs from 15 countries, including Indonesia, Mexico, Nigeria, Kenya, Peru, India, the Middle East. And all these chefs... Uh, have been working on the Chef's Manifesto, which is by chefs and for chefs. And um, they, it supports the global goals. And we are all taking back to our communities some good ideas about how to get our restaurants more involved in, um, in that sustainable process. And it's pretty exciting. There's a booth out in the lobby that we'd love you to come by and invite you to come and uh, talk to us. So... Cooking is not just about deliciousness anymore. It's chef's responsibility to make irresistible, the smarter choices for the planet and for our bodies. So it's not a one size fits all a solution. It's really multifaceted. It's a complex problem like everybody's been saying, but I'm a perennial optimist and I'm 
excited about what chefs can bring to the table. And I really want to just say thank you all for being here, for inviting me to come and speak today. And I invite you to reach out and engage with the chef community. <laughs>